power takeoff shafts. What are they? How do they work? And how do you find the shaft that's right for you? Hi everyone, Jim here. And in this video, I'll tell you everything about power takeoff shafts. Their basic components, tips and tricks on how to identify the manufacturer, series and sizes, and I'll show you how to measure the closed center of shafts. Let's get to it. Power takeoff shafts or PTO shafts are widely used in the agricultural industry. We see them in cultivators, balers, mowers, harvesting machines, and many other applications. They transfer power from a power source to equipment, for example, from tractor to implement. When a PTO shaft is the main connection between tractor and equipment, we refer to it as the primary shaft. If it's used somewhere else on the machine, for example, to connect two gearboxes to a mower, we call it a secondary shaft. So which type of PTO shaft are you dealing with? A primary or a secondary? And for what application? Let me know in the comments. And while you're at it, like and subscribe to stay updated on all our videos. PTO shafts can be divided into two main categories, standard shafts and wide angle shafts. Generally, a standard shaft has an operating angle of up to 25 degrees. It consists of two connection yokes, two cross journals, two profile tube yokes, the inner and outer profile tube, and the safety guard. The second type is a wide angle shaft. These shafts are used when you temporarily need to operate on angles above 25 degrees. A single wide angle shaft is basically made up of the same components as a standard shaft, except a wide angle shaft has a wide angle joint on one end. The last type of shaft I want to mention are the double wide angle shafts. They're made up of the same components as a single wide angle, but the standard joint is replaced by a second wide angle joint. You might need a double wide angle shaft when both joint connections are greatly offset from one another. A component I want to focus on specifically is the connection yoke, which connects the shaft to your tractor and your piece of equipment. They come in many different sizes, configurations and locking styles. The most common sizes are the following. These are the industry standard, but there are more connection sizes to choose from like plain bore or plain bore with keyway. When it comes to connection locking styles, there are many options to choose from, such as collar, clamp bolt, clamp cone, push pin, hub and flange types. However, an important thing to take into account is that if your complete shaft is a primary shaft, so the main shaft between the tractor and the machine, certain locking styles are no longer allowed to be fitted on the shaft. This is due to EU regulations that were recently updated. They're called the EN12965-19 standards, and they have to do with safety and lowering the risk of entanglement. The locking styles that are no longer allowed are the exposed spring collar type yokes and the exposed push pins. Covered and shrouded push pins are still okay. In the next part of this video, I want to give you some tips and tricks to help you identify your shaft as figuring out what brand and series of shaft you have and need to replace can be quite a headache. The following steps should help you out. The first thing you want to do is take a look at the guard, which protects and covers the shaft. Is there any writing or any branding marks on it? Sometimes it can be difficult to read the guard because it's damaged or covered in mud. And even if you can read the text, you still need to proceed with caution and do some additional checks as there are some creative people out there who might have modified the shaft. So what's written on the guard might not be what the shaft actually is. Another component you'll want to take a close look at is the cross journal, which is the component that gives away the most information to be able to determine the brand, size and series. There might be some information cast into the middle of the body that will give you an indication. But again, the component might be illegible or damaged with age in which case you'll need to measure it. First, use a digital caliper to measure the cap diameter and the span of the cross journal. Here's a pro tip. If your cross journal is from a wide angle shaft, then the two cap diameters are usually different from one another. The two span lengths usually also differ from one another. With a standard cross, the cap diameters are usually alike, and the same goes for the span lengths. When the cross journal is fitted into the complete joint, you can't measure it as easily. If that's the case, here's an easy way to measure it. All you need is a digital caliper and two standard nuts. For the cap diameters, you can measure the diameters in the yokes where the cross journal fits. For the span, place a nut on each end of the cross journal, take the measurement and then simply deduct the thickness of the two nuts. 
This can give you a good indication of the span length, which will help you identify the manufacturer and the series. If the dimensions of the cross journal don't give you a clear answer, then you might need to look at the profile tubing, the sliding elements of the PTO shaft. They come in different shapes and depending on the shape and size, you can determine the possible manufacturer and the series. Some shapes and profiles you might encounter are lemon, triangular, star, four-cornered for example. It's important to ask yourself, is the tube I'm measuring the inner or the outer tube? Some tube sizes overlap and are used on multiple series. So on one series it might be the inner tube, but on another series it could be the outer tube. So what do you do? You measure them. If it's lemon shaped like this one, you measure across the width. If it's triangular, measure across the flats and measure the thickness. Star shaped, measure the distance between two opposing points of the star. Is it four cornered? Measure across the flats and the thickness. With this information, combined with the cross journal sizes, you should be able to identify the shaft manufacturer and the series. The last thing I want to focus on is the measurement of the shaft closed center length, which is important to figure out when you're looking to replace the complete shaft. For standard shafts, this is easy enough. Simply make sure the shaft is complete and in the fully closed position. Now simply measure the center to center distance between the cross journals. For wide angle shafts, you need to be a bit more specific since wide angle joints have two cross journals in them. Some manufacturers, mostly the ones that use lemon and star profile tubing, specify their close center length from the outer cross journal on the wide angle joint. And manufacturers that use triangular profile tubing generally specify their close center length from the inner cross journal on the wide angle joint. All right, to recap what we talked about today, we discussed different types of PTO shafts, standard and wide angle, and how to find out if yours is a primary or secondary shaft. Both types of shaft have slightly different components. One of the most important ones being the connection yoke, which comes in many different sizes and locking styles. To decide which style you can use, you need to consider the updated EN12965-19 standards on safety. Next, we talked about ways to identify your PTO shaft. The first way is to check the writing on the guard or the cross journal. If you can't, you should measure the cap diameter and the span. Measuring can be tricky in a complete joint, in which case you'll have to use the trick I described using the nuts. You should also check and measure the profile tubing. And remember, the shape of the tube determines how it should be measured. Finally, if you're looking to replace the complete PTO shaft, you'll also want to know how to measure the shaft closed center. If you'd like to check out the PTO assortment that we offer at Cramp, take a look at our webshop here. That's it for today, everyone. The basics on power takeoff shafts. I hope this has been helpful to you. And if you're interested, we have a lot more videos you might enjoy. So hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers.